How you going brothers and the occasional sister? Matrimonial rights, an absolute disgusting, ridiculous law for men and for women. My merino this morning's had a little lamb. That's Tilly. Tilly's an Australian terrier. She works as a comfort dog at the homestead in Wakefield, looking after residents, giving them comfort. That's Poe, my main pig dog. She's beardy cross heading dog. Yeah, a bit of hunt away in there too. And that's Bigsy, and that Bigsy, well he's a son of Poe and also Pace. After all the rain, that lamb's uh, lucky to still be here, got absolutely drenched. They're tough though. This ten acre paddock represents everything that I've worked for my entire life. And this is the houseboat my father gifted me. And when I bought this land here, it came with an old farmhouse. I've been renting it for about 13 years, 14 years. And the farmhouse was considered to be well, unlivable, although I chose to live in it. And the landlord was a good bugger. He still is. And he sold me the bit of dirt and threw the house in for nothing. I've got a mate that's uh, made my bedroom a bedroom you can sleep in so the rats don't crawl across you in the night. And there's also a new kitchen in there. The house is half finished. Okay, well, why am I talking about these things? Well, this is all that I've owned. And the f I'm going to tell you two stories. One of a woman, one of a man. I might even throw in a third one. Uh, of where I think that matrimonial rights... In New Zealand are absolutely shameful and unfair and unjust for men and women. Uh, let me start with uh, the reason I show you this land all that is because there's a parallel I can draw with a mate who wrote me an email after oh, I did a video a couple of days ago about breaking up and I didn't realize this whole story. I want to say a mate, I, I know him through association through hunting, I know a lot of hunters and uh, I've, I've hunted with him a couple of times. So he's my age Let's go back to when he was 50, I'm 58. So when he was 50, he went over to Asia, to Thailand, and had a lot of fun over there. He'd already had a breakup and come out of a relationship. Pretty good, actually. Him and his wife had, had been civil about everything. They'd divided everything up, and they got on with their lives, and he created a new life for himself. And he went over to Thailand just to spread his wings a bit, and he met a, a Kiwi lass over there. She was 35, so she's 15 years younger than him. And they had a thing going. She worked in a bar. They had a thing going and they, they liked each other. That was cool, bit of fun, nothing much more of it. He came back to New Zealand, he had about as much, a little bit more than I've got. He had 12 acres, a little farmlet. Pretty much everything he'd put back together after his first relationship had failed when he was in his 20s. And he rebuilt his life and that's where he lived and he, he was happy. So uh, he met her in this bar, this, this Kiwi lass, and uh, they had a thing and they wrote to each other. And he went back six months later and had another wee holiday with her. And it was good, and they, they were in love, and that, and she was still working in the bar. Anyway, when he got home, after about two months, he, he got a uh, an email. Not a phone call, but an email. Hey, I'm pregnant with your child. He didn't expect that. So he went over there. Well, actually, he sent her a bit of money first, and then he went over one more time, and she was pregnant. And she had the baby over there, and he kept on sending her money. And he assumed it was his baby, and it was his baby because later on as years went by in the story, I won't get to that part, but you could clearly tell it was as they just looked, it looked like him. Well, he looked like him, it was a little boy. And one thing led to another, and she ended up coming back to New Zealand and staying on his farm. Now, for the first year, it was great. They had a great time. The baby was born. He played dad. He didn't really want to be a dad at that stage, because, I mean, who wants to become a dad at 50? I suppose some guys do, if you're in a good relationship but it was a new relationship and the first year was good they went to Kaikoura on a holiday and took the kid or little baby everywhere they went and he had enough money that they were comfortable after two years she started asking for more things she started saying hey I'm going to need my own car and we're going to need to have another holiday somewhere because I need to get out of the house and he felt he was under pressure so he got a, a side job to just what he was doing he had a little online business, but he'd got a side job to make more money, and he, he came home one day exhausted and thought, this is not what I wanted. I'm having no time to spend with her, no time to spend with my son, no time to be on my land, I'm having to work extra just to cater for her needs while she's at home looking after the baby. And he came home and he said to her, look, honey, I've been thinking about all this, and this is not working out. I can't keep doing this job. You're going to have to tighten your belt up a bit or do some online business at home yourself. Because I, I can't keep doing this, I'm not seeing you, I'm not, we're not doing what we'd planned to do. 
And she was like, fine. If you're a bloke, you know, when a woman says fine, that this, it's the dead opposite, it's never going to be fine. So for a wee while long, he stopped that job and they got, went for another few more months. And then her, her wants and needs had it grown even more. He was, she was clocking up money on the visa card now and still buying stuff they couldn't really afford. And we're getting into nearly three years of relationship and things aren't good at all. And one day he'd come home again and he, he said to her, look, uh, this is just not working. I'm exhausted all the time. We, we've got to think about how we're going to move forward and this is, it's not happening for me I'm miserable uh, your needs are growing exponentially and neither of us are really that happy and she says fine again she moved out that same day now when I read his email about this because he's told me in an email I thought first my first thought was to have moved out on the same day to be with some of the three years she already had a, an exit plan she was already thinking about getting out of it and she did, she moved out that day, and he, he, as he wrote to me the first week, I thought, this is actually quite good. I feel a whole lot of pressure's gone off me. But what he hadn't thought of is what was coming up next, and that was a contact from her lawyer. I want half of everything. Half of everything. So, he had to sell up, he couldn't, he had a, he had a mortgage, he couldn't, couldn't hold it down, so he had to get rid of his piece of paradise pay her out half the value not only that he then had to fund keep her like going with the child financially and as it turned out she'd already already had another fella lined up and she was living with the other fella and he was having to pay for that child that he'd had and she was being difficult about him seeing it okay that's one case scenario which to me is totally unfair it used to be in New Zealand that you took out what you bought into the relationship. That's not the case now. That law has changed. And you only have to be with someone for a short time. You don't even have to be married. I think it's like, I don't even think it's two years. I think it's 18 months legally. I'm not sure. Someone right below and correct me on that. But it goes both ways. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you two different cases of two women. Here's a real short one. There's a quite a well-known artist we've got. I think she's over in Picton. This was public news. And she'd be with her man. I don't know their, their marital status, but for a long time. And when they broke up, she was an artist, a fantastic artist. He took half of all her paintings and half of all the royalties to the ongoing work. So that means if I was with somebody as a songwriter, they could take all the royalties of all the songs I've written back when I was in my 20s. This law applies if you've only been with someone for a couple of years. Okay, here's another case. A friend of mine, one of her staff members, lovely lady, hard working a whole life has a child that has uh, needs, special needs that she supports. She had a, a guy move in just as a, uh, a boarder. She started having a bit of a, a thing with him, jumped into bed and all that there, and uh, they started having a relationship. Anyway, after a couple of years, he says, I want out. He takes half of her home, a payout, a payout of $100,000. She's got to come up with $100,000, and she's... In, a, in the 50s and so she's lost half her home to some guy that just moved in shagged her for a few times was only there for a couple of years and he's, he's done nothing he's just a leech a bottom feeder these laws to me are completely unfair what do you guys reckon my advice would be if you're ever going to get into a relationship where you live with somebody whether it's married or not prenuptial agreement and if they say, oh, oh, you can't really love me, you can't really trust me, you say, no, I trust you a lot. And I know that you love me. I know that you don't want all this land I've worked my whole life for. I know you don't want that houseboat that my father gifted me. I know you don't want all the things that I've achieved my whole life if we should break up. I know you just want me, you just love me. And to prove that to me, you'll need to sign this. Because if you don't sign this, then I'm starting to wonder what it is you actually want here. Is it me or everything that I own? Or half of everything I own? When you're in love, and you've got all those whistles and bells, and you're feeling wonderful, that's the last thing you want to do, because there's a part of your brain that's going, this is just so good, and let's keep it good between each other, and let's not bring up anything that's going to make it ungood. Well, I think a prenuptial is not a, not a silly idea. I've never actually done one myself. Because I've been very fortunate, I've been 
my kid's mum is wonderful and I'm still good friends today. But that's not always the case with everybody. There is a high rate of suicide among men, and I know three in Australia that I've, I, I knew, where this kicks into play, but then it goes one step further. The women have all the rights as far as the children goes, or most of the rights. They get to, for some weird reason, have more than the men. Now what I'll say to any of you men in the situation, don't be agreeable. Don't be agreeable. Don't agree to anything. If it goes to court and you're only going to see your children uh, two days out of 14, don't agree to that. No, stick your feet in. And it's the same if you, you're selling up your house. Okay, if it's 50-50, if she says I need a little bit more, don't be agreeable to that. Otherwise, down the track, you'll be resentful and bitter. Don't agree to anything. And always seek legal advice. And make a lot of noise until you get what it is you think is reasonable. Because a lot of the laws are unreasonable. I would, I would fight tooth and nail for this bit of dirt that I've got. Uh, I, don't have, I haven't lived with anybody for years, but uh, I never got married. <laughs> I can remember a mate of mine telling me, why don't you get married? Why, do, why have you never got married, Clay? And I said to him, uh, well, why did you get married? Well, it gives you security. Security? Is that where your security lies in a piece of paper, mate? Come on. I think you can have a wonderful relationship with somebody without being having a piece of paper or being married. Anyway, that's a, a thing for another debate. But that's today's uh, bro check video on my thoughts on marital rights. I think the law sucks for both men and women. If you'd like to argue the point with me, I'd love to hear your argument. If you'd like to disagree, I'd like to hear why you disagree. There is a place for matrimonial rights. I think there's a place for it as far as if one bloke's working hard and mum's at home looking after the children all that time, they're a young family starting off, she's, she can't go and work, great. Five years down the track, they've got their home, their mortgage, and she starts um, shagging the, the uh, milkman, or he starts shagging the secretary office, the officer, the, the secretary. The secretary in the office. I was going to say secretary officer. That makes no sense. What happens next is fear of it's down the middle because she stayed at home to raise the children. That's a full-time job. And she's enabled him to be able to work to pay for the house. That's fair enough. But from then on, there should be equal rights to have the children. And both, both should be able to have their own income and, and work. It shouldn't be that the man's just got to look after the woman financially for the children. They should both be responsible for their income. They should both be responsible half-half for sharing the kids. Unless they have a, an agreement that's between them that's different. But the law shouldn't be forcing that bloke to not see his kids yet pay out all the time. That's not fair. And vice versa if it's to a woman either. Although that seldom happens really, does it? Your thoughts? As always, I'm, I'm open to being wrong on any of these points, but I want to hear your debate and your argument as why well. I might be, I might be a bit too uh, outside of the park on this one. These are my feelings, and for any of you guys that are struggling with this, uh, here's a couple of points I'll end up with. If you've got children involved and you're separated from your missus, never dish your missus to the children because they are half your genes, half her genes. And when you diss them, at least diss their, sorry, I said that wrong, when you diss their mother to them, it's dissing them. I meant to say dissing them. So you're dissing them, so don't even, and it's not nice to gossip if she's not there to support herself. The other thing too is, make sure you've got a strong network around you of mates when you're going through that. Don't cut yourself off. Don't try and take the easy road out, drinking piss, smoking dack, excessive this, excessive that. Just deal with it, head on, be a, be a master, don't let it be a master of you. And life does go on and it gets better. I'm living proof of that. I, I talk to my kids regularly, have a great relationship with them and their mum. I love their mum still, we just didn't work out. No need to, to be silly about it. She's an awesome person and, and we, uh, we love our children. And we still care about each other, but we just no longer live together because it didn't work. 
doesn't always work that way. Now, what other advice would I give you guys that are breaking up and going through a hard patch if I could do, I guess, squeaky wheel gets the oil. When my kid's mum left, she left with someone else and took the kids to the North Island and I said to my daughter, honey, um, because I, I was lucky, I was, I was allowed to go and stay with my ex, was with the kids, but I had to make a trip to the North Island, and that was expensive. Going up there every six weeks cost a fortune. I said to my daughter, honey, squeaky wheel gets the oil. You keep saying to your mum, oh, I miss dad, I miss dad, and eventually she'd go, oh, okay, and she moved back to Nelson, and she did. <laughs> I don't know if it was just that that did it, but anyway, love will win in the end over fear, so keep loving, and there's no, there's no place or room for bitterness, and I know, I know there's lots of things you might have to be bitter about, but it doesn't help you. It just means that that person's living in your head rent free, so let that shit go. Try and have a good day, go steady. I've done a walk around the paddock with the dogs, a slow one. I might do one more and then kick into my day. See you later.